So I, I actually don't watch trailers very often. I'm a big believer in going into films as kind of blind as possible, knowing as little as I can. So needless that to say, the I, best went, way. I went to see Grey's thinking it was going to be a family movie, obviously. I think after the first like, seen fucks, I was realised I was slightly wrong. So it got, <laughs> it got me thinking, though, what, what's it been like as producers to make it? The talk uh, and allow my dog to answer. <laughs> <laughs> to set mine off, but um, uh, which is kind of traditionally aimed at children, but obviously for adults. I guess it's not abnormal, you know. South Park, Family Guy, have kind of set the tone in that regard. But how have you guys found this process? Well, I mean, it's it, first of all, it's part of what drew us to the the movie in the first place. Is it felt like something that hadn't been done before, and we're always looking to do things that feel new or fresher, innovative, uh, and this this hasn't been done before but uh, in a mark in marketing it's definitely a, a bit of a challenge where you know you want people to know this is not please do not bring your your young children to this it's not uh it's not gonna go well if you do that um because you know they see the cute dogs and they're very cute and you're like well i want to see that movie you're like ah. um so you know in the in all the marketing materials, the you know the hard rating uh, is is on there very prominently, and uh, and we want people to know that you know let you know exactly what it is, so you're not not as surprised as you are <laughs> in the theater. In the yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a, a few young people who learn uh, early to stay out of toxic relationships. That's <laughs> right. Very good point. But I mean, I mean, Jamie Foxx and Will Ferrell do such a great job here with, with this script. I mean, some of the script is so out there and some of the things they have to say and kind of re 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 sort of recreate <laughs> is quite, uh, is quite, is, is sort of pushing the limits for them. I'm just, well, was there anything that they were like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Or were they just sort of fair <laughs> game? Oh. <laughs> I mean, they're very playful and ready to go anywhere. And they were having a lot of fun together. They recorded uh, their lines together so they could improv off of each other. And they're really two of the best to ever do it. Uh, and watching those two geniuses uh, play off of each other and have fun with each other and think quickly uh, as a dog, uh, uh, you know, who don't know anything about how the world really works uh, is, was a lot of fun. And they were game to do or try anything. And uh, they're just sort of happy to be playing with each other. Yeah. And I was going to say, I mean, I honestly think that Doug might be the worst movie villain of the year. I was just wondering, <laughs> where do you guys think he ranks in the canon of villains that make up the Lord Miller universe? And who oh, would be his... Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the audience really turns on anyone who's remotely uh, mean to a dog. So I think the second he pushes Will Ferrell off the couch, <laughs> he's, I think, the most evil villain we've ever worked with, <laughs> which is a contrast to Will Forte himself, who is the nicest person we've ever worked with. Right, and we you know, we was, casting him was uh, was important to find someone uh like will forte who is at uh at his core one of the kindest sweetest people you'll ever meet because i think you have to know that he is not really an awful person he's playing an awful person playing one yes. right because leave a dog behind like abandoning them in the city is an irredeemable act it's true and you he had to be someone who was deserving of his cruel fate uh, but not someone that you didn't enjoy watching on screen. And I think just about every other villain we've uh, we've put in a movie is redeemed in some way or another. I can quickly before I go, because I just wanted to ask, I mean, you guys have so many fingers and so many wonderful pies and such an array of exciting projects underway and lined up. So rather than attempt to kind of pick one at random, I just wanted to ask you guys, is there one you're currently working on or even at a very early stage that's got you really excited, something that you're really enjoying being a part of? Well, we're really excited um, next year. We're going to direct a movie called Project Hail Mary based on a really amazing book by Andy Weir. And um, we're, uh, you know, we're we're also working on the upcoming, um, uh, the, the conclusion of the Spider-Verse trilogy, it, which is a blast. Uh, so 
we've got a lot of great things ahead. Yeah, the Spider-Man film has been going down quite well. <laughs> <The volume. laughs> um, but yeah. That's super easy to make. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time today, guys. Best of luck with the release of the movie. Thank you so right. much. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! Hey you guys! Hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey you guys!